Well, good morning, Shoreline. I have the privilege this morning of preaching at another church in the Bay Area, but I get to be here at Shoreline and preach the next four weeks to continue this extreme makeover series and uh, then to do another two-week series. And so I'm looking forward to being back with you again next Sunday. But today I invited a dear friend of mine, Josh Laxton, uh, to come in to preach. Josh is the lead pastor at Northland Church in the Orlando area of Florida. Uh, Josh and his wife, Joni, have three beautiful kids, and they've become dear friends through these last few years. I met him when he was working at the Billy Graham Center, and we were doing a lot of work together and basically trying to figure out how to help churches naturally share the good news of Jesus, something that we do here at Shoreline all the time. Uh, Josh has a doctorate in missiology. He is a lot of fun. He's from the South. When you, when you hear him and see him, you'll think, if you were here when he's preached before, I remember this guy. Tons of energy. You're going to love him. He loves preaching. He loves the church. He loves his family. He loves Jesus. And so I want to invite you to give a warm welcome to Josh Laxton as he brings God's Word today. Well, good morning, Shoreline. I deeply love your pastor and his wife, Sherry, and it is such an honor and joy to be with you. It's been actually a few years. The last time I was here, we were actually in the courtyard live, so it was then. But if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn with me to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I think you all all know that you're in a series, Extreme Makeover. And so we're looking at how the Lord gives us these extreme makeovers. And so over the last several weeks, you've seen how he takes the untouchables and he embraces them. You've seen how he takes teachers and makes them students. Well, this morning, we're going to look at how he takes the ordinary and he converts and transitions them into extraordinary. Now, I actually love this theme today because we are in a season of watching the Olympics, or at least some of you are. <laughs> yeah, how many of you are you watching the Olympics? Raise your hand. All right. How many of you just have it on in the background and you don't care what you watch, but you going you, you to have the Olympics on? That's my wife. It doesn't matter what is on. She is watching it. If it's table tennis, if it's volleyball, if it's basketball, if it's swimming, if it's diving. I mean, my wife is watching the Olympics. And so she loves, she loves it. And so I know that this particular title, it, it might resonate with some of you because you think you are ordinary. And so what I want to do this morning is I want to help you. If you think that you are ordinary, I want to help you understand how God wants to move you from ordinary to extraordinary. Now, some of you, I'm going to help you understand how your already ordinariness is actually, is actually extraordinary when it comes to the Lord. And then maybe just for a handful of you, since it is the Olympics, maybe some of you, you think you are just extraordinary already. And don't nudge the person next to you if they think that way. But I want to help you understand how your extraordinariness compared to the Lord, it's just ordinariness, but he wants to actually elevate what you already perceive as extraordinary to a whole nother level. And the way we're going to get there is we're going to talk about surprises. How many of you, now by show of hands, how many of you, you love surprises? Just raise your hand. You love, you actually love surprises. All right, now another, I'm going to take another poll. Here's the other poll. Would you rather receive a, a gift that you knew was coming or a gift that you didn't see coming? No, so, so if you would rather see a gift you knew was coming, raise your hand. If, you, if you, you knew it was coming, okay. How many of you, you would rather receive a gift you did not know was coming, raise your hand. Okay, awesome. So you love, by, by just show of hands, most of you know that you love surprises. Now, just so that we're on the same page, let me define surprises. Here's the definition I'm using for surprises. Surprises are things we receive that we didn't see coming. That's the surprise, is that we didn't see it coming, but we're receiving what we didn't see coming. And so what I want to do is tell you how in the life of Mary, God is going to show up in our lives to give us surprises that we didn't see coming. Now, the kind of surprises I'm addressing today only occur a handful of times in one's life. And these aren't really small or little surprises. They are life-altering surprises. So God is going to show up in Mary's life 
and give her a surprise she didn't see coming. Now, I need you to understand a couple of things about Mary. Uh, Mary is probably poor and uneducated, and she is a teenage girl, all right? So she's somewhere between the age of 12 and 15. Uh, she lived in the middle of what we call in the South Podunk Nazareth. Anybody ever heard that term, Podunk? All right, so I'm from Podunk, Mumford, Tennessee. That, that's where I'm from. You're like, where? That's exactly why it's Podunk. You never heard of it. So there, Mary is living in the middle of Podunk, Nazareth, a small, rural, insignificant town, and she is engaged and betrothed to a poor carpenter named Joseph. And so they, they have not fully consummated the marriage yet. They are engaged. They are betrothed. And here was God's surprise for Mary. She was going to have a baby. Yeah! Woo! But let's go a step further. She was going to have a baby as a virgin. Ooh! What? Kind of unheard of. And so when we look at the surprise that God gave Mary, come in for this. Come in. This is, this is fascinating. God's surprises can be glorious at the same time gloomy, can be marvelous and at the same time messy, can be wonderful and at the same time weird, can be beautiful and at the same time burdensome, and can be positive and at the same time painful. See, the, this is what I call the paradox of God surprises. And here's the paradox. I'll just put it on the screen for you. God surprises not only change our lives, but change the trajectory of our lives. You see, when he was going to bring a baby into Mary, if you've ever had a child, you know that they change your life and maybe even sometimes change the trajectory of your life. But her child was going to come to her through her virginity and people weren't going to believe her that she had a child when she was a virgin and it would change the trajectory of her life because she would give birth to the Messiah and people would just not believe. And at first, Joseph didn't even believe. He actually think that she cheated on him. Did you know that she would even become an outcast in her own home? Like, it's fascinating that God want to show up and give her a surprise, but it changed the trajectory of her life in some very difficult ways. Now, what are some surprises that God might give you, me, and that he would allow to come into our lives, not only to change our lives, but to change the trajectory of our lives. Well, maybe a spouse. Maybe he allows a spouse and that spouse changes you and changes the trajectory of your life. Maybe a change in career. Maybe the call to adopt. Maybe to move your family from one place to another. Maybe a call to ministry. Maybe a call to overseas. Maybe to stay in something. Maybe he's calling you to stay in something that is stressful and difficult. Uh, maybe it's taking a new job, moving to a new area. Maybe it's not so good health news. Maybe it's facing a life-altering tragedy. And then maybe for many of you, it's actually meeting Jesus, repenting of your sin, turning to him as king and savior over your life. I promise you, when you do that, not only does he change your life, but he changes the trajectory of your life. Now, a couple other things before we get into the passage. If you are a young person under the age of 30, I would encourage you to pay close attention to this message. Why? Because from the from the time that you are 12 to the time that you're around your early 30s, you will face some of the most life-changing trajectories uh, that you'll ever face as a human being. Like you're going to uh, face some of the life-altering changes and trajectories by who you say are your friends, uh, where you go to school, your career, your spouse, uh, your spirituality, your religion, your faith. Now, it's not to say that, you know, after you're 30 and maybe you're in your 40s or 50s, it's not that we can have life-altering surprises. I just celebrated my 42, uh, 42 uh, birthday, 42, uh, what is it, 42 years old. I'm 42 years old, by the way. What do you even say, like 42? I, I don't even know. See, I'm from Tennessee, all right? So I don't, don't even know anymore. 
But, but why is it that it's very hard for life-altering changes to come into your life when you're 40, 50? Well, you ever heard the phrase, you can't teach an old dog? All right, see, the older you get, the more set in your ways you become. But it's the young that tend to be bold and radical and willing to accept the kind of surprises that God wants to deliver. They have more of that childlike faith that God desires to use. And actually, God has a track record throughout the scriptures of coming into young people's lives, surprising them, changing their life, and changing their trajectory. I mean, you got Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Esther, David. Uh, all of Jesus' disciples were young. Timothy. Uh, I mean, so in the, here we have Mary. But I, I want to go a step further because I actually see some gray hairs in here. If you're older and, in, and you're in the last quarter of your life, I, I perk up too. Because another track record that God has is actually showing up and surprising the old later in life. What about Abraham? What about Moses? He's 80 and has this burning bush experience. Uh, Zachariah and Elizabeth. So perk up if you're in your last quarter of your life. Because God wants to bring surprises to you. So here's the main point that I want to flesh out in the remainder of our time. Here it is. God's surprises require our surrender. See, if you are going to move from ordinary to extraordinary, if you're going to let God do that, because you can't do that, I cannot do that on, on my own. You cannot do it on your own. But if we're going, if we're going to let God come into our life, surprise us, move us from ordinary to extraordinary, we have to surrender. His surprises require our surrender. So with that, let's read Luke 1, 26 through 28. Here's what we read in the gospel of Luke. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Verse 34, Mary asked the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. You see, young people, old people right here, God wants to show up and surprise you. Verse 37, for no word from God will ever fail. And here's how Mary responds in verse 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. So let's pray. Father, I know I'm speaking to a host of people here that you've already surprised in many ways. I pray that we would just confirm those surprises today. I, pr I pray for those who have not really allowed you to come into their life to surprise them. I, I pray today that their posture would be open hands and an open heart for you to come in and do an extraordinary work in their life. And so we pray that you would use Mary and her story to do that. For it's in your name we pray, our King. Amen. So here's what I want to do. I want to I ask and answer two questions. The first question that I want to ask is, how do you know that the surprise is from God? I think that's a really good question. If God wants to bring surprises in our life, how do we know that this surprise is from God? Now, there are just some surprises that you and I cannot control. Now, if we cannot control them, they are from him. Well, even when bad things happen, okay, let me, let me just deal with that just for a second. All right, the Bible teaches that God is sovereign. He is in control of all things. 
So now while he doesn't cause sin to happen, while he doesn't cause suffering to happen, he does allow suffering to happen. And so he's going to use that pain. He's going to use that hurt and he's going to use it for his glory, our good, and in some way, redemption for the world. That's what the Bible teaches. But this morning, I want to talk about and answer the question, how do you know that the surprise is from God if you can control it? Because there are some things in life that we can control, and they might be potential surprises that God wants to give us. So like, how do I know to take that job? How do I know if he wants us to adopt? How do I know if he wants us to move? How do, how do I know he wants us to change my career? How, how, do I, how do I know that Jesus wants me to trust him? Listen, I just want you to know he wants you to trust him, okay, on that one. He came for every single person on planet earth so that they might attune their heart and their minds to see him as the glorious, beautiful king who loves them and who gave himself up for them. So I, I know that beyond a shout of the doubt, but all those other things, how do you know the surprise is from God? Three questions that you need to ask. Here's three questions that you need to ask whether or not this surprise, this life altering change, life altering trajectory is from God. Number one, ask yourself, where am I with the Lord? Where am I with the Lord? You see, Mary, she's this young teenager who loved the Lord. She had a posture ready for the Lord to change her direction. Because in her mind, she's engaged to Joseph. She's just waiting until her marriage will be complete and they would live happily ever after in Podunk, Nazareth. I mean, with a little white picket fence, I mean, with a couple kids, I mean, like that, that in her mind. But her heart was postured for the Lord to change her trajectory. So let me ask you this. Do you have a heart that is postured to and for the Lord to change you? Because I would say that there are a lot of people that they intellectually and in some sense, head knowledge wise, know the Lord, but their heart is not postured for him to come into their life to change the trajectory. But she had a posture that was so close to the Lord that she was ready to follow him in whatever he called her to do. And so this will be a position and posture to receive the Lord's surprise. Because if you have a hard heart, it is going to be hard for you to receive what he's going to call you to do. So you need to ask yourself, where are you with the Lord? The second thing that you need to ask is, what is the Lord calling or asking me to do? All right, so there's an angel from God. There's this messenger and the content of the message. What what was the content of the message? Well, look in verse 30. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. Like, listen, you're, you're living for him. He, he's going to tap you on the shoulder to use you. And here, here's what's going to happen. Verse 31, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. And his kingdom will never end. <laughs> this is so good. You cannot miss this, church. You see, the surprise in Mary's life was not about Mary. Let that sink in. What God wanted to do with Mary was just to use her as a conduit for what he wanted to do in the world. <laughs> sure, God wanted her to be a part play a role, but it was ultimately about the Lord and what he wanted to do. So to tell you a little bit about where I'm at in Northland, so a couple years ago, I actually had an opportunity to come to a very stable and healthy church. But my, but my wife, as we were praying, she just did not feel that call to go to a healthy and stable church. It was too far from home. So I had to grieve because I thought, I, was I thought we were going. Well, so after God closed that door, I went to my wife and I said, where would you, where, where would you be open to moving to? 
So she said anywhere in the southeast because that's where, that's where we're basically from. It's where all of our family are is in the southeast. And then she even mentioned Orlando by name. And she's like, if the Lord wanted to call us to Orlando, I'd go. So I got on the internet and I looked to see if there was churches in the southeast and in Orlando that I could apply for. And so I found one church. I only applied to one church, and that was Northland Church right outside of Orlando, Florida in Longwood. And so lo and behold, I, I, won't, I won't bore you with all of the details, but the Lord led us to Northland. But I, I want you to know a few things about Northland. Northland used to be one of the largest churches in the state of Florida. At one point, about 15 years ago, they were averaging over 10,000 on a weekend. They were averaging that on the weekend. But when I got there post-COVID, they were averaging 650 people. As you could imagine, there, there's a lot of story in that, that, that large gap in there. And I won't, again, won't bore you with the details, but as I'm going through the process of being called to Northland, I realized early on, me going there, it wasn't about the glitz and the glamour of what had been. There is a huge risk in moving our family from Illinois to Northland. But I knew, I knew that that call was not about me. It was actually what, what God wanted to do through me to a church that he had purpose and life for. And so at the end of the day, we knew that it would be a huge risk. Well, we didn't know what we, we didn't know all of the details of what we were going into. We knew that the church had been through a lot of transition, a lot of hurt. But I can tell you now, having been there over two years, God knows exactly what he's doing. And when you receive his surprises, just know that that surprise is not primarily for you. It is not primarily for me. It's primarily for his glory and others good in the world. So here's the principle. God's surprises are ultimately about his mission in the world through me, not my mission in the world for me. You see, that job, it is not, if you are going to that job because it's ultimately for you, I promise you, God's not calling you to that job. If you think that you are primarily going, oh, I, I'm making way more money. Listen, God is not primarily about you making more money. Now, that's a good thing. That can be a good thing. But a lot of times what happens in, in, in the church world, in Christians' eyes, is that we primarily get so fixated on what's in it for us and we fail to even ask God, what's in it for you? Y'all all right? Because I have to ask that to Northland every now and then because sometimes I know that that principal packs a punch and I just want to make sure you're all right, all right? I want you all like in the floor because that hurt you. Because those surprises that God brings in our life is not about the new shiny job. It's not about the raise. It's not about a potential increase in lifestyle. It's not about how others will perceive us. It's not about us finding love. It's not about us leaving our family. It is not about us. We need to get over ourselves. It is about the Lord. So God's surprises are all about what God wants to do through you for his glory and other good, just like we see here with Mary. The third thing, how do you know? How do you know? How do I initially process the call or the ask? All right, so how's my heart? How's my posture? Am I ready to receive? And then you're going to ask, you know, what's the call? What's the ask? Because it's not ultimately about me. But then the third question is, how do I initially process this call or ask? So she, so she, Mary, she asked, how will this be since I am a virgin? She's ultimately asking the angel, hey, listen, I believe, I accept, uh, but I can't do what you're asking. I, like Mary, I cannot do what you are asking. So how's this thing going to go down? So let me pause right here and rewind a scene just earlier in this passage with Zechariah and Elizabeth. So earlier in this chapter, the angel said to Zechariah, don't be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to call him John. So Elizabeth and Zechariah, they're well advanced in years. They have no children. He's a pastor priest. 
He's, he's performing his ministerial duty in the temple. The angel comes to him and says, Zechariah, listen, uh, you, you've also found favor. You and Elizabeth are going to have a baby. And he responds in a way that says this, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. See, this is interesting. So here's a mature pastor priest where his response is a little different than Mary's. Mary believed but just couldn't understand how the Lord would do it. Zachariah didn't believe. And guess what's going to happen to him? He's going to become mute. He can't speak until John the Baptist is born. You see, let me ask you, are you a Zachariah or are you a Mary? Because when God comes into our life, we understand that, hey, listen, the call that God has placed on people's lives, we cannot do it by ourselves. I sounded really Southern when I said that, didn't I? Yeah. So here's the principle. Don't miss this. God's surprises require God's strength. You see, when God shows up in our life to surprise us, to move us from ordinary to extraordinary, we should be bewildered. We, we should ask questions. We should have sweaty palms. We should be a little nervous. We should have that brief moment of hesitation. Why? Because we ought to be going, we can't do this. See, if the surprise is from God, we know that we will not be able to fulfill it in our own strength. We will not be able to face it in our own strength. Therefore, we know that God's going to have to show up. He's going to have to move the mountains. He's going to have to open up all the doors. He's going to have to align the hearts. He's going to have to sell the house. He's going to have to calm the fears. He's going to have to give the joy in the midst of sorrow. He's going to have to provide the money. If the surprise is from God, it will not be easy. What surprises in Scripture that God wants to give his people, what surprise has ever been easy? See, and here's what I would say. Don't get too comfortable being this kind of incredible church here in the area. As one of the larger churches in the area, don't get comfortable being ordinary at this size either. Y'all all right with that? Okay, just wanted to make sure. All right, number two, the second question. second question I want to I wanna ask and answer according to Mary, is what do you do with God's surprises? All right, so that's how you know if it's a surprise from God. What do you do with God's surprises? Well, I love, I love this. At the very end, she says, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be to me fulfilled. So here's what you do. You surrender. May your word be fulfilled. Now, before... Before I tell you how do you get to the place of sur surrender, I, I do want to mention what some of our, and I say our, me included, what some of our human tendencies are when it comes to God's surprises. Many of us, we just simply miss them because we're just not ready for them. Uh, many of us, we just ignore them because we're so focused on ourselves. Uh, some of us, we skip over them because we're just not that interested. Uh, some of us, we just question them to death. We're like the little micromanager. We've got to have all the details. So we just can't ever surrender to them. And then some of us, we just reject them because the cost is too much. So what will it, will it, what will it require to surrender to God's surprises? Here's what it will require, faith. It will require faith. What is faith, Josh? Faith is simply confidence belief in, trust in, blank. So when it comes to the Lord, our faith, our confidence, our trust in, our belief is in him. It's anchored in him. So here's four faith requirements. I'm just gonna give them to you fairly quick and then we'll end. Four faith requirements to surrender to God's surprises. You're gonna need these. I promise you're gonna need every one of them. Number one. You'll need to have faith that God loves you. You'll need to have faith that God loves you. You see, the angel gives the greeting to Mary. Greetings, you are highly favored. Because this surprise that comes into her life, it's not going to be easy. In fact, 
her family's not gonna believe her. She's gonna become an outcast in her own community. So the people who she had grown up in her life who had said that they loved her will turn their back on her. So she will have to remember as she plays out this call, this surprise, the call to extraordinary, she's gonna have to remember that God loves her. So if you, if you let God's surprises come into your life, you and I are gonna to have to anchor ourselves, anchor our hearts to the truth and the reality that God loves us. It will be hard, it will be difficult, it's gonna be demanding, it's gonna be overwhelming, and you're gonna have to say, you're gonna have to say this to yourself every time. Probably you look at yourself in the mirror, especially in those difficult seasons. God loves me, God loves me, God loves me, God loves me. I'm highly favored with the Lord. That's what Mary would have to do. Number two, you'll need to have faith that God is with you. You will need to have faith that God is with you. So we read where the angel says, the Lord is with you. Here's a, here's a fun question. What does it mean for the Lord to be with you? This, this is fun. Because you got to go all the way back to the very first book of the Bible in Genesis chapter 2. Where we read where God had fashion man. He had created man from the dust of the ground. He hovers over the lifeless man. He breathes life into him. And then after bringing Adam to life, God puts him in the garden to, to tend it and to keep it, at which he understands God's like, hey, it's not good for man to be alone. So what does he do? He causes a deep sleep on Adam, takes out a rib, fashions Eve, brings the greatest gift to Adam, uh, Eve at that time. And he belts out into a song. But what we see in Genesis 2 is that the Lord was present with them in the garden. And it's from his presence will flow purpose. And that purpose can be found in Genesis 1 verse 28. Where he tells Adam and Eve that you are to be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, subdue it, and exercise dominion. Now what's fascinating about that is that wherever God is present, life and purpose are found. So when she says, or when she hears this phrase, the Lord is with you, it would register to her that where the Lord is present, life and purpose flow. So for us, his presence is the invitation for us to participate in his mission. Because it goes all the way back to what we had said earlier is that God's surprise in Mary's life was not ultimately about Mary. It was ultimately about the Lord and what he wanted to do through Mary. So when, he, when she is saying that the Lord is with me, that's when she is saying that God's life and his purpose are flowing through me. The third You'll need to have faith that God has all of the details covered. You'll need to have faith that God has all the details covered. The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. You ever thought about why God many times doesn't give us the details? Because here's what would happen as fallen human beings. We would get so preoccupied over the details that we would lose our focus on trusting him. So one of the main elements of following God is trusting him, walking by faith and not by sight. And then the last point, you'll need to have faith that God can do the impossible. For no word from God will ever fail. Other translations say, for nothing will be impossible with God. God wanted to leave no doubt in Mary's mind that what has just been told her, he will accomplish. You know, God wants to leave no doubt in our minds today that there is nothing that he cannot do. There's nothing too big for him. There is no problem he cannot solve, and there's no issue too complex. He's God, which means that while we can't, he can. And so he wants to move you. He wants to move me. He wants to move us from ordinary 
to extraordinary. But I promise you the extraordinary move that God wants to do in our life is unlike anything that the world in their mind can fathom or even fashion. So my challenge to you is, will you, just like Mary, will you allow him to take the ordinary and you surrender to allow him to use you to become extraordinary? Let's pray. Father, I do pray for Shoreline. I pray for the men and the women, the young men, the young women that make up Shoreline that they would be like Mary, that they would have that posture that, hey, they're they're ready for you to move in a mighty, life-altering way. And that they would surrender, that they would take their ordinariness and they would surrender so that you can work and move in extraordinary ways for your glory and others' good. For it's in your name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Excellent message, brother. By the way, if you're sitting here, I want you to know this church that you're in, and if you're online, part of our congregation, is the outcome of countless surprises along the way. We made plans, and he kept surprising us. So it's a powerful testimony to what he does and wants to do in all of our lives. Hey, before you go, we got some important things coming up. This Wednesday is Night of Worship, 6.30, right here at Shoreline, And you know, it's a very special service, but this Wednesday night, and I'm not working yet, this Wednesday night is going to be extra special. You just don't want to miss it. So at night of worship, we sing more, we pray together, we have community, we have refreshments afterwards, we take communion together. And again, this particular one is going to be extra special. You just don't want to miss it. So that's 6.30 Wednesday coming up. And then if you want prayer after this service, as always, we have folks left and right who are praying up front because they love to pray with people. So if you got something on your heart you need help with or something on your heart you want to rejoice with someone, we would love to have you come forward. And lastly, if you're new at Shoreline, if you're online, you can text the number on the, str- on the screen and get our digital uh, welcome card. But we'd love to welcome you if you're here in person and if maybe it's your first time, but even if you've been coming for a while and you got questions, you want to know what's going on around here, go right across the lobby to the Connection Center. Our team there would love to meet with you. We got a gift for you, answer any questions and learn more about you. So I'd love to send you out with a blessing. Would you please stand together? And as you go, would you thank God for what he's given you, but pray for what he wants from you and make plans because it's responsible. But would you be willing to embrace surprises from the Lord and understand that he has some things he wants to show you and lead you in? So go out today and be surprised in the Lord. God bless. We'll see you Wednesday night. In the truth you provide.